I did my Terrence Crawford versus Sean Porter video and I gave my prediction. Um, if you don't know, more or less, I picked Terrence Crawford to absolutely destroy Sean Porter. And it's not a popular opinion, but I just don't see Terrence Crawford not getting rid of Sean Porter. However, this fight, regardless of whatever I think, has some of the most important implications on both of these fighters career Sean Porter right now if he loses again in a step up fight for a title would essentially be known as the guy that was just short the guy that was a champion at one point but ended up capitulating his belt to another man every time he stepped up or to the to the top of the top I also think that Terrence Crawford has a historical career. He is a Hall of Famer. You can't take away his accomplishments at 140. And at 135, he did also dominate. The guy's undefeated. He's never been in a close fight. And truthfully, I don't think this fight's going to be very close. But if it does, what happens? If somehow Sean Porter proves me wrong and all the boxing pundits wrong that He's the man to beat, Sean, um, to beat Terrence Crawford and give him his first loss. What happens to Terrence Crawford's resume and his outlook, especially at 147 pounds? This man has not yet fought an in-his-prime seasoned veteran, a true welterweight at 147. And I think we're going to learn a lot. What were to happen if he loses? Is he exposed? Is he going to be considered a cherry picker? Was he essentially a victim of top rank liking to fight in-house? If you really think about Terrence Crawford and you think about top rank, top rank has essentially squandered their opportunities at 147. Top rank doesn't have the deepest 147-pound fighter pool, and it's showing as he's fought Amir Khan. He's fought Kel Brook. He's fought Aegis Kavalaskis. Guys that aren't a part of the other side of the street. This is actually the first time that PBC is lending Sean Porter over to ESPN to promote a fight. And truthfully, it's perfect timing. Terrence Crawford's on his last fight with um, Top Rank. I don't know if he's going to re-sign with Top Rank. I don't think he should. And I think it's the first time that Sean Porter is fighting on ESPN in a very, very long time. I'm, I haven't really looked back. And um, to me, it's really just a moot point. However, if Terrence Crawford in his first big test at 147 gets exposed and loses in devastating fashion, or honestly, even if he loses in a close fight, I think it damages his, his reputation at 147. I think it'll kind of feed into the entire narrative that PBC fighters and PBC 147 fighters especially are a little more superior at 147 than Terrence Crawford was, and it's why top rank protected their investment. I mean, Terrence Crawford really doesn't generate that much money for Top rank, as Bob Arum has said, he's lost money on Terrence Crawford, and he's been very transparent with how he feels about the monetary value of Terrence Crawford. He says he doesn't sell. He doesn't like to do press. He doesn't really like to promote himself, which a lot of other fighters do. But Terrence Crawford kind of comes from the school where he goes, you're my promoter. And I agree. At a certain point, when you're a promoter, you have to promote your own fight. You have to promote your asset. You're making money off their ass, off your asset. Got to make your money, right? I understand that. But at the same time, promote your guy. Be on social media. Make him do all these things that he doesn't want to do. I mean, for fuck's sakes, he just missed his Zoom press conference with Sean Porter. Shows, again, he doesn't like to do that promo, which, again, if you're not generating income for the company they're going to stop promoting you and stop putting money into your budget for advertising right however i think the damage that this fight 
could potentially cause on Terrence Crawford is substantial. So in my opinion, he has to beat Sean Porter. And if he doesn't, Errol Spence immediately becomes the number one um, fighter at 147. You're going to enforce the narrative and reinforce the narrative that Errol was better than you and you were afraid to fight him. It's not fair because, again, I don't think any fighter is truthfully afraid to fight another fighter. They fight for a living. So if you're going out there in the square circle, you're getting paid a bunch of money. You've been doing this your entire life to get to this level. You're not afraid to fight anybody. But boxing media, boxing fans, casual fans, regular fans, hardcore fans will start to think that Terrence Crawford was a protected fighter, especially on 147. So in my opinion... This is do or die for Crawford. I don't want to see him lose and then have to do a rematch, which I'm sure is the case. I think if Terrence Crawford wins, now we get the narrative that Terrence Crawford can fight Errol Spence. He can go across the street, maybe fight Keith Thurman. When I say go across the street, I mean go to PBC. Fight Keith Thurman, fight Sean Porter, fight even Danny Garcia. Keep building the fight until ultimately the two meet at the end. And that's that. But Sean Porter, respect, man. You're, you're fighting the best of the best. You arguably have the best resume at 147, for the exception of maybe Errol Spence, who's fought nothing but killers, in my opinion. He fights the best of the best. And even Ugas. Ugas has a tremendous resume at 147. I mean, he fought Sean Porter. He fought Manny Pacquiao. He's fought top-tier guys. I think he would fight Keith Thurman. And truthfully, he wants to fight Errol Spence. So he does have a, a solid resume, in my opinion. But hands down, right now, the guys on PBC at 147 have a way better resume. And now it's time finally for Terrence Crawford, who I've been critical of. At 140, I wanted Victor Postel to beat Terrence Crawford. I was a big Victor Postel fan. I don't know if you guys were around, but I'll never forget. I was 25. I... I was at a festival trying to stream the Victor Postel versus Terrence Crawford fighting Terrence Crawford. After two, three rounds, figured Victor Postel out and just fucked them up. I remember being so upset because I picked Victor Postel to win. He was like a five to one underdog. I'm like, this is easy money. Victor Postel was rejuvenated. He came off of tremendous victories. He was doing his thing, but he ended up losing. I mean, he knocked out Lucas Matisse, who somebody was who's somebody I was really, really high on. But Terrence Crawford has proved me wrong time and time again. I never really went at, against Crawford after that fight with Postel, and I'm never going to doubt him again. Only person I would take against Crawford is Errol Spence, and that's because I've been with Errol since the amateur days. I've supported his career. I really, really enjoy watching Errol Spence, and I, I hope they fight because I want to see who is the superior boxer. But Sean Porter is another guy I followed for a while. I've watched a lot, of, a lot of his amateur fights. I know he's familiar with Terrence Crawford, but I just think being familiar when you're at the top level right now, Terrence has something to prove. This fight's just going to be box office and have such a tremendous impact on the trajectories of both of these individuals' careers. Let me know. Do you think if Terrence Crawford loses, he's exposed, he's a fraud at 147? Because at 140, you can't deny he didn't beat everybody. 147, Sean Porter, to me, is a made man at 147. He's time-tested. He's fought Broner. He's fought Keith Thurman. Come on, the guy's resume is second and none. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Be well, follow, and let's get this 1K, man.